This lesson discusses about welfare policies and programs for the persons with disability in India. The major purpose of this chapter is to introduce the learner to the magnitude of the PWD, types, Government of India policies, welfare programs for PWDs. Objectives After completion of this module, one should be able to explain the magnitude of disability in India, Understand the types of disability. Understand the various government policies for the welfare of the PWD. Understand the various government programs for the welfare of the PWD. Magnitude According to the report on survey conducted in 1991 by the National Sample Survey Organization, 6.5 million of India's population had at least one disability or the other. About 10% of the PWDs had more than one type of physical disability. With constant persuasion, the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment was able to get an estimate on disability included in Census 2001. As per Census 2011, population of differently abled in India is 26.8 million which is 2.21% of the total population of the country. There has been increase in differently abled population in 10 years. Number has increased from 21.9 million in 2001 to 26.8 million in 10 years. Among them, 18 million differently abled populations are living in rural areas and 8.1 million populations in urban areas and among them, 14.9 million men and 11.8 women are there in the country. The large number of PWD citizens makes it imperative that the society and state face challenge of their integration and rehabilitation in full measure. Types of Disability As per the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016, types of disabilities have been increased from 7 to 21 and the central government will have the power to add more types of disabilities. The 21 disabilities are blindness, low vision, leprosy cured persons, hearing impairment that is deaf and hard of hearing, locomotor disability, dwarfism, intellectual disability, mental illness, autism spectrum disorder, cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, chronic neurological conditions, specific learning disabilities, multiple sclerosis, speech and language disability, thalassemia, hemophilia, sickle cell disease, multiple disabilities including deaf blindness, acid attack victim and Parkinson's disease. Rights Regime The Indian Constitution provides broad categories of fundamental rights, while part 3 of the Constitution provides for fundamental rights which are justiciable and Courts can be approached for their enforcement. Part 4 provides for directive principles of state policy which are fundamental in the governance of the country and it shall be the duty of the state to apply these principles in making laws. The laws and schemes referred in this section provide equal opportunities and prohibit all discriminations against every citizen of India which also includes persons with disabilities. The 86th Constitution Amendment Act provides free and compulsory education for children between the age group of 6 to 14 years as a fundamental right and in consonance with this, the right of children to free and compulsory education act 2009 is adopted in India. The National Rural Health Mission 2005 provides accessible, affordable and accountable quality health services to the poorest households in the remotest rural regions. Remedies In the event of infringement of an individual's fundamental rights, Indian constitution provides 
opportunity to move to the Supreme Court and seek justice. If one observes the above provisions, we can easily accept that the Indian constitution ensures freedom, equality, justice and dignity of all people, including persons with disabilities. The constitution has given responsibilities of empowering disabled persons to the state governments. Hence, the primary responsibility of empowering disabled person is on state governments, but the union government has made significant efforts in empowering this population. Welfare schemes and programs To emphasis on empowerment of the person with disability, a separate Department of Disability Affairs was started in the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment in 2012. Later, department was renamed as Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities, Divyanjan, in 2014. The main vision of this department is to build inclusive society which provides equal opportunities for the growth and development of persons with disabilities. The department deals with the following legislations. 1. The Rehabilitation Council of India Act, 1992. 2. The Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act, 2016. 3. The National Trust for the Welfare of Persons with Autism, Cerebral Palsy, Mental Retardation and Multiple Disabilities Act, 1999. Acts and Rules 1. Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act, 2016. 2. The National Trust Rule 2000 3. The National Trust Regulations 2001 4. Rehabilitation Council of India Regulation 1997 5. Rehabilitation Council of India Regulation 1998 6. Condition of the service of the member secretary, the officers and other employees 7. Rehabilitation Council of India that is Standard of Professional Conduct, Etiquette and Code of Ethics for Rehabilitation Professionals Regulations 1998 Schemes and Programs for Welfare of the Persons with Disability 1. Accessible India Campaign that is Sugamya Bharat Abhiyan The aim of the campaign is to enhance accessibility of built environment, transport system, information and communication ecosystem for persons with disability. This campaign includes three components. They are 1. Built environment accessibility 2. Transportation system accessibility 3. Information and communication ecosystem accessibility Along with the above components, multi-pronged strategies were adopted. They are 1. Leadership endorsement of the campaign 2. Mass awareness 3. Capacity building through workshops. 4. Interventions which includes legal framework, technology solution, resource generation, etc. 5. Leverage corporate sector efforts in a public-private partnership. Next, assistance for differently abled National Handicapped Finance and Development Corporation, that is NHFDC. It was established on 24 January 1997 by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, Government of India. It is an apex institution for channelizing the funds to persons with disabilities through the state channelizing agencies, which was nominated by the state government. Schemes under NHFDC Schemes implemented through state channelizing agencies and nationalized banks. The following schemes have been implemented for the welfare of the persons with disability. Income generating activities. Wide range of income generating activities to disabled persons for setting up small business in service or training sector, that is loan up to 3 lakh for sales or trading activities and 5 lakh for service sector activity. Purchase of vehicle for commercial activity, that is loan up to 10 lakh. Setting up small industrial unit, loan up to 25 lakhs, agricultural activity, loan up to 10 lakhs, self-employment among persons with mental retardation, cerebral palsy, autism, loan up to 10 lakhs are implemented. Loan for education or training to disabled persons. The main purpose of the scheme 
is to meet tuition and other fees, banks and equipments for pursuing professional courses in a recognized educational institution in India and abroad. This scheme will be applicable for those persons with 40% or more disability up to 10 lakhs and up to 20 lakhs will be provided to study in India and in abroad respectively. Financial assistance for skill and entrepreneurial development. The main objective of this scheme is to provide training to the disabled persons to make them capable and self-development in the field of traditional and technical occupations and entrepreneurship. The scheme is applied to those who are in the age group of 15 to 50 years. Training will be given up to 12 months. During the training, rupees 2000 per month stipend will be provided to the training. Microcredit scheme. This scheme is implemented through NGOs working in the social sector specifically for persons with disability and they should have adequate experience to take up programs for economic and social rehabilitation of economically weaker section of the society. Under the scheme, loan up to 5 lakhs to NGO and 25,000 to each beneficiary will be provided. Schemes for Parents Association for the Mentally Retarded Persons The aim of the scheme is to set up income generating activity for the benefit of mentally retarded persons. It involves mentally retarded persons directly and income will be distributed among the mentally retarded person. Under the scheme, financial assistance up to 5 lakh will be provided to set up income generating activity. Schemes for Disabled Young Professionals This scheme is for professionally educated unemployed disabled youth to improve self-confidence through self-employment, professional training, education. The corporation provides loan to them. The loan will be provided up to 25 lakhs. The beneficiaries should possess a professional degree from recognized institution to obtain the loan. Scheme of financing, construction of commercial and business premises for starting self-employment activity to persons with disability. The main aim of the scheme is to provide financial assistance in the form of loan to the persons with disability. The loan will be provided to start self-employment. The loan up to 3 lakhs will be given under the scheme and within 10 years loan is to be repaid. Scheme for providing hand-holding support to disabled entrepreneurs through Vishesh Udyami Mitras. The purpose of the scheme is to provide hand-holding support to needy persons with disabilities which will be provided in the form of information, support and guidance for procedural formalities which requires availing concessional credit under NHF DC scheme. Scheme for providing hand-holding support to differently able persons to avail skill training or skill upgradation through Vishesh Parikshan Mitras. Under the scheme, assistance will be provided to needy disabled persons in the form of information, support and guidance for procedural formalities to get admission to avail skill trainings. Scholarship schemes for 2500 differently able students. The main objective of the scheme is to provide financial assistance to enable differently able students to pursue professional or technical courses from recognized institutes. Every year, 2500 scholarships will be provided to the differently able students and 30% scholarships will be reserved for girls which they can transfer to male students in case of non-availability of female candidates. ADIP scheme that is assistance to disabled persons for purchasing or fitting aids or appliances. This scheme is centrally aided and implemented by voluntary organizations. The aim of the scheme is to assist the needy disabled persons in procuring durable, sophisticated, scientifically manufactured, modern, standard aids and appliances. This scheme will not be given for any commercial supply of aids and appliances. The agencies which are eligible to implement the scheme on behalf of Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment are as follows. 
society is registered under society's registration act 1860 and their branches registered charitable trusts district rural development agencies indian red cross societies and other autonomous bodies which are headed by district collector or chief executive officer and district development officer of zilla parishad national apex institutes which are functioning under administrative control of the ministry of social justice empowerment or ministry of health and family welfare state handicap development corporations local bodies zilla parishad municipalities district autonomous development councils and panchayats nehru yuva kendras deen dayal disabled rehabilitation scheme previously it was called as scheme to promote voluntary action for persons with disabilities which was revised and renamed as deen dayal disabled rehabilitation scheme in 2003 the objective of the scheme is to create an enabling environment to ensure equal opportunities equity social justice and empowerment of persons with disabilities to encourage voluntary action to ensure effective implementation of people with disability act of 1995 key strategies of the scheme are enhancing educational opportunities at all level supporting all measures which are necessary to promote formal and non formal employment and placement opportunities implementing outreach and comprehensive community based rehabilitation programs supporting manpower development activities to train required personnel at different levels for all programs or projects or activities supporting the development publication documentation and training materials setting up equipped resource centers at different levels encouraging coordination cooperation and networking multi sectorial linkages promoting research in various development areas which involves innovative strategies assistive device and enabling technologies apart from this scheme will be providing grant in aid to ngos for the projects in the area of vocational training centers sheltered workshops special schools for the persons with disability home based rehabilitation programs preschool early intervention and training community based rehabilitation human resource development seminars or workshops or rural camps grant to purchase vehicles construction of buildings grant for computer grant for low vision centers halfway home for psychosocial rehabilitation of treated and controlled mentally ill persons and district disability rehabilitation centers national award for empowerment of persons with disabilities in order to recognize efforts and to encourage others to achieve excellence in this field the ministry of social justice and empowerment has been awarding national award for empowerment of persons with disability since 1969 these awards are being awarded on the international day of disabled persons that is 3 december every year the awards are classified into different categories they are one best employees or self employed with disabilities two best employers and placement officer or agency three best individual and institution working for the cause of persons with disabilities role model awards four best applied research or innovation or product development which aimed at improving the life of persons with disabilities outstanding work in the creation of barrier free environment for the persons with disabilities five best district in providing rehabilitation services six best teach channelizing agency of national handicapped finance and development corporation outstanding creative adult persons with disabilities seven best creative child with disabilities eight best braille press nine best accessible website ten best state in promoting empowerment of persons with disabilities 11 best sport person with disability there will be a screening committee to select awardees which made by state or union territory they will shortlist the awardees in different categories of national awards and while selecting the candidates for 
national award committee will be giving adequate representation to all regions legal guardianship persons with autism cerebral palsy mental retardation and multiple disabilities as even after they reach 18 years of age they may require someone to represent their interests in the legal areas throughout their life though it is not mandatory to apply for legal guardianship the national trust act 1999 has made provision for appoint legal guardianship it provides mechanism for monitoring and protecting their interests including their properties the parents in case of conviction of parents the siblings that is half or step siblings relative any registered organization and local level committee may apply for guardianship disha a scheme of the national trust it is an early intervention and school readiness scheme for children to provide training and counseling to children and parents it is aimed at setting up disha centers for early intervention for person with disability in the age group of 1 to 10 years services provided under disha scheme are day care centers provision of special educators and early intervention therapists physiotherapists occupational therapists counselor and along with caregivers and ayas medical assessment room with therapeutic aids and appliances counseling and guidance and transportation facilities apart from all these schemes and programs ministry of finance government of india has allowed a concessional rate of excise duty of 8% as against applicable rate on cars being able to be driven by the physically handicapped or cars which has been suitably designed to be able to be driven by physically handicapped or cars meant for physically handicapped summary government of india has initiated various welfare measures for the well being of persons with disabilities in india separate department in authorities to monitor all welfare measure especially for pwds given more focus for vulnerable in the community apart from the union government respective state governments also providing various welfare schemes and programs for pwds